friends, this video on potentiometer part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's now look at some of the uh, important applications of potentiometer. So let us look at the comparison of EMFs of two cells. How does a potentiometer help in comparing the EMFs of two different cells? So let us suppose we have two cells, cell 1 and cell 2. So let us first talk about cell 1. So in this case what happens? This is how I have drawn the circuit. This is my driving circuit with a key, a rheostat and a battery. So this is the driving circuit. This is the long wire. So here instead of drawing that complicated circuit, I have made it simple. So instead of drawing that entire uh, wire crisscross and all, I just took it as a straight line. So the end A is connected to the higher potential end and the other end is the end B. There is a galvanometer whose one end is the free end and the other end is connected to this wire AB with the help of a jockey so that it can it is movable from one point to another. So what are the terminals of the potentiometer? This and this. That is the free end of A and the free end of the galvanometer. They are the terminals. So between these two terminals we connect cell 1. Right? Now when we connect the cell 1, what do we do? We start adjusting the jockey such that it comes to a point where there is no deflection in the galvanometer. Let us suppose that point comes at P1. Let us suppose at point P1 there is no deflection in the galvanometer. Let us call this point as P1. Right? Let us say that the distance between A and P1 is equal to L1 and the total length of the wire AB is capital L. And let us also say that V0 is the potential difference provided by the driving circuit. That is, this is the potential difference between A and B. Therefore, what will be the EMF of this cell? So the EMF of the cell, let me denote it by E1, will be equal to the potential gradient into the distance between P1 and A because the cell is connected between these two points and the potential at this point is equal to the potential at this point, potential at this point is equal to the potential at this point. So the cell EMF will be equal to the potential gradient multiplied by the distance between these two points that is AP1. So this will be equal to rho into L1. What is rho? Rho is the potential gradient. So potential between A and B that is V0. Distance between A and B that is capital L. So E1 is equal to V0 by capital L into L1. Right? So this is equation 1. So now what do we do? We remove the cell 1 and put cell 2 in place of cell 1. Now this cell has got a different EMF maybe E2. So now what do we do? We again start moving the jockey such that we reach a point where again there is no deflection of the galvanometer. So let me call that point as P2. So let us suppose that point is some point P2. So at point P2 there is no deflection in the galvanometer. So let me call this distance AP2 as L2 and we already know that AB is equal to capital L and V0 is the potential difference between A and B. Therefore what would be the EMF of this cell E2? E2 will be equal to rho into AP2 that is equal to V0 by capital L into L2. Right? So this is going to be the equation 2. So now what do we do? We divide equation 1 by equation 2. So what do we get? We get E1 by E2 is equal to V0 by L into L1 divided by V0 by L into L2. So this will get cancelled. So this gives L1 by L2. So we can say that E1 by E2 is equal to L1 by L2. 
Now, with the help of this, we can actually compare the EMFs of two different sets. Right? We, we can also say that we can find out the EMF of a cell. Let us suppose, like in this case, what did we do? We first took one cell 1 with EMF E1, another cell 2 of EMF E2, which was not known to us. Now, let us suppose instead of using E2, we if we use a standard cell of known EMF E. So, if a standard cell of EMF E is used in second case, in that case we can say that E1 will be equal to L1 by L2 into E. So with the help of this, we can find out the EMF of a cell. So this is how it also helps in determining the EMF of a cell. Right? Okay. Let us look at another important application wherein the potentiometer can be used to determine the internal resistance of a cell. So let us see how actually does it find the internal resistance of a cell. So let us see how do we determine internal resistance with the help of a potentiometer. So let us quickly draw the circuit first. Let us suppose these are the ends of the wire, the long wire. So from here we have the driving circuit consisting of the battery, the rheostat and the key. Right? And here this is one terminal of the potentiometer and here we have the galvanometer. One end is connected to AB with the help of jockey and the other end is again free. So these are the two free ends of the potentiometer. So this is now connected to the circuit. Let us suppose the circuit to which it is connected consists of a cell with EMF E and an internal resistance R. This in turn is connected to an external resistance R and a key in this circuit. So let us call this point as A and this point as B. So A and B are the two points from where we have connected the terminals of the potentiometer. So here V0 is the potential difference between A and B of the potentiometer. So this is the potentiometer. This is the potential difference provided by the driving circuit. Now let us see what happens. Now when the key is open, so right now I am talking about this key K. So when the key is open, what do we do? First we keep the key open and we try to find out the point on AB where there is no deflection on the galvanometer. So we find that at point P there is no deflection in the galvanometer. Right? So what do we say? So what will be the value of this EMF E? This EMF E will be equal to potential gradient into this distance that is AP into AP. I am applying the same logic here. So this what is potential gradient? That is the potential difference between A and B divided by the distance between A and B. So that will be equal to V0 divided by L into AP. Now let us suppose that AP is equal to small l. So this can be written as this. So this is my equation 1. Now in the second scenario, what do we do? We close the key. So now the key is closed. So now once this key is closed, what happens? The jockey is again. So now the point where the deflection of the galvanometer would be 0 will also change. So again we start moving the jockey to find out the point where the deflection is 0. So we find that at some point P dash there is no deflection in the galvanometer. Therefore we can say that. So now there is a current because now we have closed the key. So the circuit is a closed circuit. So a current is flowing through the circuit. So what will be the current flowing through the circuit? So that current will be equal to E divided by what is the net resistance in this circuit? This R plus this R that is capital R plus small r. Right. So we can say that. 
So we can say that the potential difference between points A and B that is VA minus VB that is the potential difference between point A and B that will be equal to the current flowing between A and B which is equal to I into the resistance what is the resistance that is small r so this will be equal to VA minus VB is equal to so this will be I into the external resistance in the circuit so this I what is I just to now we wrote in the previous equation that I is equal to E divided by R plus R so this into capital R so now we have found out P dash where the galvanometer has no deflection so let us say that a P dash is equal to L dash so what can we say we can say that now the EMF so now we can say that this potential difference that is VA minus VB will be equal to the potential gradient into L dash right so what is this VA minus VB that is equal to E divided by R plus R into R is equal to what is rho that is equal to V naught divided by capital L into L dash so this becomes equation 2 so we already had equation 1 that is this one so now what do we do we divide equation 2 by equation 1 so we get er divided by r plus r divided by what was my equation 1 it was e is equal to v naught l dash divided by l divided by v naught L divided by L so this E and this E will get cancelled L and L V naught V naught will get cancelled so from this we get R divided by R plus small r is equal to L dash divided by L or we can say that R into L is equal to L dash R plus L dash small r or R is equal to R L minus R L dash divided by L dash or internal resistance is equal to external resistance into L minus L dash divided by L dash so this is how we can find out the internal resistance of a cell with the help of a potentiometer so everywhere you see the basic concept remains the same what is that concept we try to find out the point where the galvanometer shows no deflection galvanometer shows no deflection means there is no current flowing through the galvanometer therefore the potential at the point B which is connected to the free end of the galvanometer and the potential of the point at which the galvanometer is connected to the long wire that is equal right so once we find out that point then we can find out the EMF of the external circuit that, that EMF or that potential difference is equal to the potential gradient of this uniform wire multiplied by the length of the point from the other end of the wire right so that is the basic concept which we have been following in potentiometer for various purposes so with this we will end our discussion on potential thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.